A second puppy tested positive for rabies. In the total litter, there were 12 puppies. One which showed clinical signs was euthanized earlier this month and came back positive for rabies, which triggered the seizure and euthanasia of all of his litter mates. Of those litter mates, one additional puppy tested positive. And from what I've heard, that was a puppy that was adopted out and was asymptomatic. And some people had some questions of how this could have happened. The most likely scenario is that they were infected in Texas. Multiple reports are now coming out that there was a dead skunk on the property in Texas, which makes sense based off the strain that was isolated from the first puppy. But how could a dead skunk transmit rabies to these puppies? Most people think of rabies being transmitted by bites, and that's because the rabies virus is in the saliva. But it can also be found in CNS and PNS tissues, and in tears. And in the past in humans, we've seen organ transplant infection. And this infection can happen because of direct contact with mucosa, such as eyes, mouth, or open wounds. And this shows that the skunk didn't have to bite these puppies in order to infect them. If that's the case, then why didn't all the puppies test positive? And it could be because of the incubation time for rabies, especially given the second puppy wasn't symptomatic yet. And since we use brain matter to test, the virus may not have made it into the brain yet. Or not all of the puppies were exposed to the skunk. And because these infected dogs can shed the virus in their saliva up to 10 days before they have clinical signs, anyone who is exposed to the saliva is at risk, especially if you have wounds on your hands or let a puppy lick you in the mouth. As I mentioned before, this is an absolutely a freak event and in no way should we expect this to happen again.